So uh, to, this morning I'm going to be talking about one of the most prevalent building materials in the world today. And uh, as you can see by the background, it's concrete. Um, so let's just get one thing straight before we begin, the difference between cement and concrete. I know for the longest time I used the terms interchangeably, but uh, I've learned that they really are two different materials. Um, cement is an ingredient in concrete and after reacting with water, the cement starts to harden and it binds together the aggregate in the concrete and you uh, end up with your finished product of concrete. You can see the, the different aggregate sizes in there and then the, more or less the gray is the concrete binding everything together. And since cement is such an important uh, ingredient in concrete. I just want to go into a little more detail about it. Um, the oldest use of cement uh, was found in Israel. Uh, it dates back to about 7000 BC and it was a concrete floor slab and it used a lime based cement. Um, the, the, the Great Pyramid of at Giza also used a, a lime based mortar to hold together the stones of the pyramid. Uh, the Greeks and the Romans also used lime-based uh, cements that the Romans actually added, added to the lime base by putting volcanic ash in it and that added more cement-like properties and I'm going to discuss, discuss that more uh, in a bit. But research really didn't get into optimizing the chemical composition of cement until about the 1700s. Uh, mostly in England this was, and by 1824, a man named Joseph Aspen uh, submitted for a patent for Portland cement. And that is what is used in, in modern society now, is Portland cement. It's not a brand name, but that is actually the, the name of the material, and it was named after um, limestone that was quarried from a, in an island named Portland in England. Um, so it was a little clever marketing tool by Mr. Aspen. Um, and how is cement made? Well, first you need your raw materials. Uh, it's usually limestone, um, clay, sand, and the elements and compounds you're looking for in those raw materials are calcium, iron, silica, and alumina. And once you have that, you need to grind it down and proportion it so that you get that op optimal chemical composition in, in your cement. The uh, mixture is then fired at roughly 2700 degrees Fahrenheit and you get an output, what you can see in the bottom, your right there, uh, is called clinker and it's golf ball to baseball sized uh, pellets and when you smash it up and add a little gypsum, you get Portland cement. So uh, enough with cement now, we want to get to the finished product and that is concrete. So before you start to prepare your mix of concrete, you want to know what characteristics do you want from this concrete. You want to know the strength, you want 4,000 psi, 6,000 psi, it could go up, I think they could get to like roughly 20,000 psi right now, strength, compressive strength. You want to know the consistency, which is me measured by the slump test, and that's basically you have a, a cone and you, you fill it up with the cement and lift the cone up and the instantaneous drop in height of the cement would be your slump. And that, that just gives you a good idea of how workable it is uh, when you're going to be pouring it. So once you define what you want out of your concrete, then you start proportioning your mix. Um, the four main ingredients in concrete are water, cement, fine aggregate, and coarse aggregate. And there are a couple different methods to proportion it, but the it, it used to be it was called the one two three method, and it was that was just uh, cement to sand to gravel by volume, and that will give you a rough estimate of uh, what the proportion was for your concrete. But now the American Concrete Institute specification two eleven uh, kind of draws out more detailed proportioning uh, steps for you and you can either do that by weight or by volume. But no matter how you proportion your mix, you're always gonna need to go back and refine it because as I learned in my lab class, my, my group was trying to make a 2,000 PSI mix. 
Uh, we followed ACI perfectly, all the calculations were right, but we were only getting about 1,700 PSI out of it. So it's, it's a very variable uh, material, so you're always going to need to go back, trial and error, to get what you ultimately want. And right here is just an example of uh, the different proportions of materials uh, based on the design strength. Uh, I used the, the uh, weight method from ACI just to throw this together. And um, as you can see, generally what happens is the cement uh, content increases with your design strength and the fine aggregate size the proportion um, decreases. But what, you, what you're really looking for out of that chart is uh, the water to cement ratio, W to C ratio, because that's really the driving parameter in concrete. Um, you want to limit the amount of water in it and that makes that makes your design stronger. And there are a couple of ways to lower the water content and lower your W to C ratio and drive your strength up. Um, one of those ways is adding additional cement light material. That could be volcanic ash, fly ash, blast furnace slag, or silica fume. And these residuals, uh, they don't necessarily have cement-like properties by themselves, but when they're mixed with cement and uh, start reacting with the lime in the cement, they, they grow cement-like properties and they can help uh, bring your design strength up. You can also add various admixtures into your, um, into your concrete. And normally, as you can see, they're uh, in liquid form. Uh, you don't put a lot of it in. It's, it's a very low content of the admixture if you're going to add any. Um, they're they're normally grouped by function. Um, the first is accelerating, which it, it, means, it means what it says. is It, it accelerates the strength gain in the concrete. Concrete is generally um, designed for a 28-day strength, meaning that if you want a 6,000 psi concrete, uh, by after 28 days of pouring it and allowing the cement to react with water, it'll have that 6,000 psi strength. So an accelerating agent might bring that time down to 25 or 26 days. You also have air and training um, admixtures, and what they do is it adds air bubbles into the concrete. So if you have, say, a sidewalk outside in New Jersey in winter, there's going to be a lot of freezing and thawing the concrete so if there's extra room in the concrete for the water to expand and contract the concrete won't crack as easily. You also have retarding admixtures and they decrease the, the rate of the initial set of concrete so this is more for when your construction workers are pouring the concrete at the job site it'll give them more time to go around and consolidate the concrete with vibrators and um, also finish it up so you have that nice smooth finish. And the last set is water reducing. You have normal range and high range. Um, the normal range reduces the water content by 5 to 10 percent and the high range, which are known as super plasticizers, can reduce the water content by 15 to 30 percent. And really what you're getting at here is lowering that WC ratio and increasing the strength of your concrete while still keeping it workable to get into the form work. So now that we know a little bit about what goes into concrete, what are its advantages? Uh, I personally feel that there's two major ones, variability and workability. Variability meaning that you can design a strength anywhere from 2,000 to 20,000 PSI. Um, you can have various consistencies. Uh, various densities. You can have lightweight concrete for your building if you need to keep keep the load on the on the foundation down. You can have heavyweight concrete, um, which you can use at nucle nuclear plants to uh, shield from radiation. There, there's a lot of different um, variations of concrete that you can make, and this is opposed to steel, where the steel, you're just going to buy it from, from the steel mill and whatever strength it's at, that's what you're stuck with. with. Whatever shape it's at, that's what you're stuck with. But with concrete, you could also work it into your forms and if you could build a form out of wood or metal and pour the concrete into it, 
the, then you will have that shape. There, there's no need to be stuck with what steel gives you. But there's also disadvantages to concrete. One, it's a brittle material. So I'm sure a lot of you have been at an amusement park or something where you go up in those, they're almost like elevator rides. They bring you up real slow, hold you up there for a little bit, and then drop you out of nowhere. Um, that's what a brittle failure is like. It doesn't give you much warning when it's going to happen, and it'll just collapse. Um, but you could, you could stop that from happening in concrete by adding a little reinforcing steel. And steel is a ductile material, meaning that it will deform a little bit and you will notice, noticeably see deformation before it fails. So you'll have time to exit the building or exit whatever structure is about to fail. Um, concrete also has low tensile strength. Um, it's only about 10% of the compressive strength. So if you have 4,000 PSI concrete, the tensile strength is only about 400 PSI, which is really not much when you're considering huge buildings and bridges. So now to the, to the fun stuff, I have some cool pictures here. Uh, Notable concrete structures. One is the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. It's the largest building as of right now. Uh, Saudi Arabia is actually building a bigger building called the Kingdom Tower, but it's not done yet. So uh, I picked the Burj. Um, also the Hoover Dam on the Colorado, Colorado River. So we're going to start with the Burj Khalifa. It was uh, constructed from 2004 to 2010. Um, from the foundation piles to the foundation mat to the superstructure up to about a level of 2,000 feet in the air, it's all reinforced concrete. And you can see here a picture. This is the mat foundation. You can't see the piles because the mat foundation is uh, covering them. But you can see some steel reinforcement all over the place sticking out of it, and that's what you're going to tie your superstructure in so that it's one firm piece. This is a mid-construction photo of erecting the building, and as you can see, this is clearly all concrete in there. Um, up here, you can see a lot of form work, so the forms just slide up as, you're, as the building's going up, and you pump the concrete in a pressurized pipe up to where you need it. And like I said, they did that up to about 2,000 feet, and the next 700 feet of the building is made of steel. And this is, in all its glory, uh, standing over Dubai. Uh, all the other buildings look like, look like a one-story house compared to it. Uh, next is the Hoover Dam. And I wanted to mention this mostly because of concrete-wise, it was really interesting because, as I said before, when cement is reacting with water, it's a chemical reaction, and it's exothermic, so it gives off a lot of heat. Um, so if you were to pour uh, something as big as a dam all at once, there would be so much heat generated in the core of the dam that um, from the surface of the dam to the middle, there would be such a temp temperature differential that a lot of cracking would occur. And you obviously don't want to hold back water with a cracked dam. So what, what they did um, was these are all form, form work here, squares. They ranged. 25 to 60 square feet, and they would just they would just lay five foot uh, sections at a time, and they also circulated cold water um, through steel pipe throughout the dam, and obviously the steel pipe remains in there. Uh, this is just a, a picture looking downstream. This is a, uh, the four towers that you see are water intake for the hydroelectric power of the dam, and those are also made of reinforced concrete. Uh, this is just a, a more modern picture looking upstream and just looking at it, I think it's amazing that from a material made of water, rock, sand, and cement, you can make something as big as this. And I'm just really excited to see uh, what the human race could build next with this, with this material. Thank you.